We have uh, two minutes and uh, 37 seconds left. So let's actually, let's move a little, your body a little bit. Uh, can you, you stand up? It's really good to move your shoulders. I, whenever I sit down in the table, a uh, uh, long time, I usually do the, this uh, uh, shoulder moving. <laughs> I feel a little better. Okay, good. Um, okay. Um, Missionary Peter Kim already prayed, so I want to pray. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, whenever I go to a uh, lecture in UBF, uh, overseas, and uh, even my uh, class, I usually uh, joke a lot. I used to know a lot of jokes, but I almost forgot. I mean, almost all forgot. But uh, let me tell you one uh, joke. Maybe you heard about it. Uh, there was a um, president named uh, Kim Young-sam. He... Uh, he's from uh, there is a province named Gyeongsang, Gyeongsang province. So he he says noodle, uh, uh, guksu. He said guksi. So he says always he said to his STEM members, let's eat uh, not guksu noodle, but guksi, uh, guksi. So his steps always uh, make fun of him. Anyway, he was invited by Bill Clinton, and his step really wondered how can I we help him uh, to speak English. So they thought about it so many times, and uh, one of the step uh, said to the president, "I want to teach you two sentences. So remember these two sentences, and when you meet, use these two sentences. One is." Uh, whenever you meet, uh, whenever you meet uh, President uh, Bill Clinton, say, uh, "How are you?" And then the middle, you just forget about it, and at the end, you said, "Me too." That was it. So um, indeed, he flew to Korea to uh, Washington D.C. and visited the uh, White House. And uh, when he met Bill Clinton. Instead of saying, how are you? He said, who are you? And Billy, Bill Clinton was so surprised. What? Who are you? I'm president of the United States. 
he didn't say, but well, uh, maybe he he was joking. So he said, "I am a husband of Hillary Clinton," and and Mr. Kim says, "Me too." <laughs> anyway, there was uh, I don't know if it's a real story or not. Uh, there was one of story. Okay, um, so we already learned. Uh, uh, observation and interpretation. The final word is, inter uh, I'm sorry, observation, interpretation, and application. I'm doing the all three of them. So try to remember, okay? All right. Today we're going to do inductive Bible study workshop, Ruth 2. Okay. All right. So let's just start. Uh, by the way, uh, what kind of book uh, the book of Ruth is? Narrative history. What is a narrative history? Is real, real people, real place. But how God use this uh, real people in God's redemptive history? Okay, so we know that there's a narrative history. It's not a history. History, history is a kind of uh, all different uh, missionary. Uh, Peter Kim talk about uh, um, uh, interpretation. Uh, let me uh, let me tell you one thing. Um, the book of First King and First, uh, I'm sorry, book of First King and Second King, and the book of First Chronicles and Second Chronicles, both of them was written um, during the uh, Babylonian captivity. So when you read it, uh, first and second king, you see really, really the author severely wrote <laughs> about the uh, first king and uh, second king. It's very, when you read it, your heart is just heartbroken. But when you read it, uh, same history book, uh, first Chronicle and Second Chronicles is quite different because the author of First Chronicle and Second Chronicle, we believe that Ezra wrote, he know the uh, people of Israel. They are really, um, I mean, they are so much beaten by uh, uh, captivity life. So, same same history, but he really want to encourage, encourage people, people of Israel, because their wounds are so hard. So, for example, there is uh, Hezekiah, king of uh, Judah. The first, uh, uh, second king, he says, he's a terrible king. He, he deserved the punishment. But same person, Ezra wrote just like this. Even he was a, such a terrible man, but he listened to God's words and repented. And he came to God. So author, author's point of view is a little different. Okay. Which one you emphasize make big differences. Okay. Anyway. Um, Okay, I, the first thing we always do, uh, divide into paragraphs and give a title to each paragraph. This is what we call in uh, New Jersey we have factual study. But actually that's not a really factual study. Factual study, you have to go into observation. <laughs> that is at least you have to go in observation and interpretation further to uh, uh, application. But uh, um, I really encourage you when you do next time, factual study, don't stay in here. Paragraphs. It's just, this is uh, dividing the paragraphs and give titles. That's not enough in factual study. Okay. All right. Anyway, um, what is the purpose of this division? To see the picture, big picture of passage, which help us to find main idea. Okay. Okay. All right. Sorry. 
All right, I forgot. Let's read uh, uh, chapter two. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, can uh, can can you read um, maybe two verses? Let's read it quickly. <laughs> okay, from the missionary uh, Peter. Oh, yeah, wait. That's yes. The ends. Okay, the ends. Uh, Book of Ruth, uh, chapter two, verses. Each person read the two verses. Okay. All right. Uh, now Naomi had a relative on her husband's side, a man of standing from the clan of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone in whose eyes I find favor. Naomi said to her, go ahead, my daughter. So she went out, entered the field and began to glean behind the uh, harvesters. As it turned out, she was working in a field belonging to Boaz, who was from the clan of Elimelech. Just then, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you, they answered. Boaz asked the overseer of his harvesters, who does that young woman belong to? Uh, the overseer replied, she is the Moabite who came back from Moab with Naomi. He said, please let me glean and gather among the sheep behind the harvesters. She came into the field and has remained here from the morning till now, except for a short rest in the shelter. So Boaz said to Ruth, my daughter, listen to me. Don't go and clean in another field and don't go away from here. Stay here with the women who work for me. Watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the women. I have told the men not to lay a hand on you. And whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars the men have filled. At this, she bowed down with her face to the ground. She asked him, why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me, a foreigner? Boaz replied, I've been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with the people you did not know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord the God of Israel, under those wings, you have come to take refuge. May I continue to find favor in your eyes, my Lord, she said. You have put me at ease by speaking kindly to your servant, though I do not have the standing of one of your servants. At mealtime, Boaz said to her, come over here, have some bread and dip it in the wine vinegar. When she sat down with the harvester, she, he offered her some roasted grain. She ate all she wanted and had some left over. As she got out to glean, Boaz gave orders to the men, let her gather among the sheaves and don't reprimand her. Even pull out some stalks for her from the bundles and leave them for her to pick up and don't rebuke her. So Ruth gleaned in the field until evening. Then she threshed the barley she had gathered and it amounted to about an ephah. She carried it back to town and her mother-in-law saw how much she had gathered. Ruth also brought out and gave her what she had left over after she had eaten enough. Her mother-in-law asked her, where did you go in today? Where did you work? Plus to the man who took notice of you. Then Ruth told her mother-in-law about the one at whose place she had been working. The name of the man I worked with today is Boaz, she said. The Lord bless him, Naomi said to her daughter-in-law. He has not stopped showing his kindness to the living and the dead. She added, that man is our close relative. He is one of our guardian redeemers. Then Luz the Moabite said, he even said to me, stay with my workers until they finish harvesting all, the, all my grain. Naomi said to Luz, her daughter-in-law, it will be good for you, my daughter, to go with the woman who works for him because it's someone else's spirit, you might be harmed. So, so, <laughs> so, 
So Ruth, so Ruth stayed close to the woman of bows to glean until the barley and we harvest were finished and she lived with her mother-in-law. Okay, thank you. All right, we'll read one time. Okay, so uh, I divided the uh, paragraphs and give a title. Okay, uh, first one through three, Ruth gleans in uh, Boaz's field. And four through seven, Boaz found out Ruth was walking in the field. And the verses eight through 13, dialogue between Boaz and Ruth. And verses 14 through 16, Boaz invited Ruth for lunch, provided for and protected her. And 16 through 23, dialogue between uh, Naomi and Ruth. Very simple. So we, we can see what's going on through this uh, uh, paragraphs, right? Dividing paragraphs. Okay. Okay. Uh, observation. Uh, Mission Peter already talked about. Okay. Uh, I wrote one more time here. Okay. Observation is the act regarding attentively and being alert. This action involves more than physical sight. So it has to do with keen mental awareness. So when you read it, you have to concentrate a little bit. Um, some people read the Bible, they say they're so sleepy. <laughs> so you need to uh, wake up a little bit. Uh, okay. When we begin to uh, read the Bible passage, please do not interpret the passage. Once you your thinking go into interpretation, what happens is you forgot the uh, Bible reading. So please do not try to interpret, okay? Just read it, okay? Just read it, read it several times, okay? And uh, I wanna uh, emphasize one more time what the mission Peter Kim says, we need to humble ourselves, concentrate to the facts, okay? Observation, there are five W's and one H. Not necessary. all the passage has a five W's and one H. Especially H has a problem. So try to find who, what, when, where, why, how. Okay. Also, using the five fingers, emphasis, repetition, relationships, comparison, and contrast. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, let's go. <laughs> Number one, who appears in the passage? Ruth, Boaz, Naomi, yes. Who else? Workers, harvesters. Harvesters, that's excellent. Who else? You, you're missing one, yes? Woman of Boaz, woman of harvesters. There is a woman hired people there, right? Okay. Yeah. With harvesters. Yes. Okay. So let's go here. All right. Main character is Boaz, Ruth, and Naomi. We already know. So what in character is harvesters, overseers, and women of Boaz. They are helping the harvesting. Okay. All right. We should note Boaz as a son of Salmon, who had married Rahab, a Gentile prostitute. Okay, in the uh, 421 and Matthew 1 uh, 4 5. Okay, so uh, Boaz's family has a history of marrying foreign women. <laughs> this is a really history that Jewish people think that they are pure blood, that's not very true. They married a lot of Canaanite women in spite of forbidden. Okay, all right, okay. What, what is happening? What is happening? What is the total story in chapter two? Harvesting, one day, one day harvest the story. You know, uh, Ruth, Book of Ruth is a really short period of time. Start from uh, Moab to 
Jerusalem to the harvest until uh, um, Ruth married only took three months. History is a whole change within three months. The, another Bible, let's just say uh, Nehemiah, there is uh, at least uh, um, 20, 30 years of a story is there in Nehemiah. But this book doesn't take much time. So what's happening is only one day in chapter two, just harvesting, right? Okay, let's go to here. Uh, okay. Ruth go out to Glen in turn out to be Boaz's field, right? Okay, that's very important. Boaz encountered Ruth and began to protect and provide her. Boaz noticed Ruth's beauty in her heart. And uh, three, uh, uh, Naomi realized that Boaz is one of their uh, guardian redeemers. I needed to talk about garden, uh, guardian redeemers. Um, in Korean words, murugi. <laughs> murugi. In the, in the Korean Bible, it says murugi, but this is the meaning of, uh, I think murugi has a, such a difficult understanding. People could not understand it. But the uh, meaning is guardian redeemers. God really tried to protect the poor people with uh, uh, guardian redeemers. There is three uh, duties of guardian redeemers, okay? Three duties of guardian redeemers. God's portion in inheritance. Once God gives a put, uh, property, they their tribes have to uh, keep it. But there is many dangers that they may lose it, right? So who can help? Their relatives, okay? All right, so they call the guardian redeemers. God gave his people law that protect their family lines and property. There is three things, okay? If the poor sold their property to others, especially foreigners, one of their relatives should redeem them. In other words, buy, and the, the first seven years they can keep it, but after seven years they have to return to original owner, okay? It's uh, Leviticus 25, 25, and uh, uh, 47 48 uh, shows that. Second, if anyone injured or killed, their relative should revenge one who uh, <laughs> uh, injured and killed. In other words, you have to protect your family members. Not necessarily when you killed by accident, that's a different story. That's a different story when there is accident that happens accidentally uh, injured others, that's a different story, right? But intentionally, there's a problem that uh, relatives have to deal with that. And if a relative should die without leaving a son, his family line should marry his widow and fulfill the duty. We know that story is this here, right? So there is uh, three guardian redeemers uh, duties, okay? Very important. Because of this, Jesus was born the line of Judah. Whether you believe or not, let me, uh, if you have Bible, uh, can you look at the Bible? Um, um, Genesis chapter Uh, Genesis chapter uh, 49, can, is anyone, can you read uh, Genesis chapter um, 41, 9 and 10? Uh, I'm sorry, 49, 49, 9 and 10. Yes. Right, this is, we don't know exactly, 
but Jacob blessed Judah. You know, Judah is not a first son of Jacob, right? Who is the first son of Jacob? Reuben, right? But Reuben committed a great sin, right? So he lost the first son's position, first son's position, and he handed to the uh, Judah. And God promised that among, among the Judah's line, Jesus would be born. That's it says, verse 10, the scepter. What is the scepter means? The king usually is a symbol, right? Scepter will not depart from Judah, nor are the rulers of staff from between the, his feet until he to whom he belongs shall, shall come. So God already predicted that Jesus would come in Judah's line. And without, without guardian, guardian redeemers, this line would not be happened. Right? God's promise would not be happened. So God made a rule, very important rule, but the uh, God's line was handed down to Jesus. Okay? Anyway, that's a one of the story. So very important. Okay? Okay. When? We have to talk about when. When does this take place? Harvest. Okay. All right. All right. What else? When you read it, what else you can find? All right. Let me give you a hint. When Ruth went out to the field. In the morning and then until what? Until evening, right? Okay. In meantime, the Bible clearly says it when very specifically. All right. Let's go here. Okay. So one day period during the harvest time, the verses 1 to 22. Okay. All right. Until the barely, barely and wheat harvest finished, meaning um, the period between six to seven weeks from uh, late April to early June. Okay, I made the parenthesis. Springtime, romance buds and blossom. <laughs> That's my idea. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Ruth went out the field again to glean in the morning. Verse 3 says, daytime, lunch time, evening time. So we know the character of Ruth in here, right? Okay. All right. Where does this take place? Where? Field, okay, but is there any other places? Think about it. Okay, all right, what else? Okay, all right, okay. let's go. First, let's start from Naomi's house, right, okay. Second, start Boaz's field, right? Okay, third, Naomi's house again. Okay. And later, Naomi's house and Boaz's field. <laughs> All right, okay. A right. so, little bit aware, carefully <laughs> read it. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, now. So the observation we did, there is no H, so I skipped, okay? So we did the five W's. Now we are doing uh, five fingers, okay? Right. Fingers, using the five fingers method, the point is not to find comment for each of the five fingers, okay? We just find it, okay? All right? There is a simple tool to help us analyze the passage. Repeated words. Danny, <laughs> Lord, 
<laughs> okay, what else? Field. Okay. What else? Clean. Yeah. Clean. What else? No. <laughs> I said to or A. Okay. All right. Okay, let's go here. Okay. Clean, clean, cleaning is repeated 10 times. Very important words. Clean. In uh, I made a comment here. In Leviticus 19, 9 through 10, 23, 22, God instructed his people to leave gleaning from their crops at harvest time for the poor and foreigners. Why? God is compassionate. God is compassionate on them. That's why. Okay. Who is the marginalized? Uh, last time we tried to find the definition of marginalized, right? Okay, Marginal, marginalized people are poor people, foreigners, fatherless, widows. God cares of poor people. God cares foreigners. God cares fatherless and widows. Glim means uh, when you, you know, these days there is a machine that you can you can uh, when wheat field they can cut it by machine there is nothing left but in ancient time they used the shackle when shackles there is uh, remains uh, the wheat right so poor people come and pick up that's also uh, meaning clean right okay all right there is a field uh, field is uh, uh, Mission Sarah leads as uh, fields seven times, eight times. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. And there is a harvest, harvest, harvester, harvesting. There is eight times two, three, uh, four, five, seven, nine, 14, 21, 23. We need to understand the agriculture society of the times. Okay. Almost everyone was involved in farming, okay? And after time of famine, there was a time of blessing when God provide abundant food, okay? Uh, the, we know that Atomos Peer was joyful, right? And harvesters should remember God's blessing, give thanks to God and show concern for the needy like a poor foreigner out of God's compassion. Okay, so harvesters um, usually, uh, you know, you are kind of top. There is a danger that you ignore the poor people, right? But they really, God wants the top people have compassion. Compassion from uh, poor people, okay? Okay. Continually, uh, the Lord. Lord, five times. <laughs> first two, uh, first four, two times, 12, two times, 20. In the time of God's blessing, people were happy to bless each other in the name of the Lord. If you look at here, especially Boaz is a truly godly man. You know, when he greeted the people, what did he say first? When he met the uh, uh, harvesters, what did he, he say to them? Lord be with you. And they respond, Lord be uh, bless you. So we know that Boaz is a really godly man. The greeting was like that. He didn't say, what's up? <laughs> okay, all right. So they recognize God as a sovereign ruler 
and the source of blessing and reward. This is very important in Jewish society. There are so many Jewish um, festivals, right? One of the festivals is they call barley and wheat harvest. What they do all day long, for all day long, they pray. Their prayer is very simple. They say, um, uh, they said, if God would not help us, we cannot harvest. If uh, God does not give um, good weather, we cannot harvest. If God did not protect the enemies, we cannot harvest. So they say, God is our giver. God blesses. This applies in Jewish society. And because of that, God is truly blessing them. Think about it. What kind of company Jewish owns? Microsoft, Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, Facebook, Citigroup, Intel, NBC, ABC, GE, uh, IBM. Of course, they don't believe it, but they believe the God's blessing. You know, any success, no matter how much you money have, but if you don't thank to God and ask a prayer, God will not bless you. Even if you have a, a million dollars, it's a matter of time, all will be gone. If God would not bless that. So I really pray that uh, Mission John may pray like this. <laughs> Mission John joking, okay? Uh, so their prayer is always like that. Uh, okay. Contrast. What contrast can you find here in this passage? Think about it. Okay, all right. Okay, let's go here. Uh, contrast social hierarchies. Landlord, overseer, harvester, cleaning woman, and foreigners. Right? Boaz and Ruth, Jew and Gentile, man and woman, man of outstanding, poor widow. Boaz, giver. Ruth, receiver. Okay. Boaz fields and Naomi's house. Boaz's, uh, Boaz's field was abundant with crops. Naomi's house was poor, needed to receive benefit. All right, there's enough contrast, right? All right. Think about it. When we read it, think about it. What is kind of contrast there? Okay. All right. Okay. Relationships. What kind of relationship can you find in the passage? We already talked to many things already, right? Say it again. Okay, Boaz Lidimer. Okay, Boaz and the uh, Ruth, okay. All right, let's go to here. Naomi and Boaz. <laughs> Naomi husband, uh, Elimelech, was from same clan as Boaz. Relationship, right? Okay, Naomi and Ruth. Ruth is initiated to go out to clan to support her mother-in-law. That's very hard, right? As a foreigner, you came, 
go to someone else's. There's a foreign land, not his people, foreign land, and go to the uh, glen. Ruth told her mother-in-law what had happened later, right? And they had mutual supportive, uh, supportive and genuine trust relationship. Wow, I, it's uh, truly Naomi and Ruth is such a beautiful mother-in-law and the so daughter-in-law. Israel and Moabites. The author emphasized the fact that Ruth is Moabite. Historically, Moabites were enemies of Israel. We already talked about it yesterday, right? Okay. Emphasis. What can be emphasis in this passage? Okay, uh, we don't have much time, so I will go here. Boaz characterized as a giver, Ruth as a receiver. Very important emphasis, right? Okay, chapter two covers a one day story in the entire 23 verses. Bible never talk about the one day story in the whole chapter. That's amazing. But this is very important. That's why, right? The through verses 8 through 16, nine verses are conversation between Boaz and Ruth. Springtime. <laughs> Love blossom. <laughs> Okay, all right. So here, now we have to go to interpretation, which we learned today. As we have observed, key words in this chapter is glean. In that agricultural society, gleaning was the common practice of marginalized people. They would follow the harvester, pick up the, any crops that was left over. This was mandated by, the, by law of God and shows his concern, the marginalized people. As I said, God is compassionate. So we have to compassionate to the poor people. Okay? In this chapter, we can see how God shows his compassion on the marginalized through relationship Boaz and Ruth. Boaz is the giver, Ruth is the receiver. Okay, so we can find the Boaz's character as a giver. Okay, all right. All right. Boaz, his harvesters greeted each other in the name of the Lord. They fear the Lord, meaning they are living according to Bible teaching, right? They saw each other in the Lord. I didn't look at you with the my own perspective, but I look at you in the name of the Lord. Then make a big difference. If I look at all of you with God's name, there is great hope. But if I look at it with my point of view, everybody is no good. <laughs> all right. So that's a big difference, right? How you look at the people. Are you greeting within the name of the Lord? Do you have a heart of Jesus? Okay. All right. Okay. So, so she saw, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I went to, too far. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, in the time of George, there is still people who fear the God. Okay. There is people, God used those people, okay? So he noticed an unknown young woman who was working his field. This indicate that he paid attention to his servant and knew them well. His first response was to take care of her. Okay? So he has a, such a Christ character, Boaz has a Christ character. Okay? All right. After hearing she was a Moabite, 
she didn't he didn't say get out of my field but what did she say she called her my daughter and permitted her to walk in his field he saw her with a father's heart and treated her like a, a family member without discrimination she was vulnerable but he protected her and provided her a water for her in this middle east drinking water is scarce very vital and uh, precious he was generous he was mindful and kind had compassionate heart for poor poor and foreigners okay he recognized Luther's uh, sacrifice and commitment in leaving her own family, care for Naomi and her own homeland to live in a uh, different culture. He was also mindful of the fact that he was widow. He did not view her through eyes of religious prejudice, but based on common human uh, humanity. Okay? So we have to have basic humanity. Right. All right. All right. Finally, um, he blessed the roots in the name of the Lord. He knew God's heart of blessing for anyone who comes to him by faith. He knew that God is not only the God of Israel, but the God of Gentiles too. Basically, we are Gentiles. Right? Okay. He knew that God rewards those who please him. Okay. Gracious invitation to launch a fellowship. Ruth was not a harvest worker, right? But she had not earned the, the right to eat lunch. But Boaz invited her to the same meal as the harvesters. This is grace. Right? Okay. This glimpse of Jesus' invitation to come, eat with, with him, and to attend weddings of the Lamb. I thought about it. This passage, I realized we are so privileged, not because we have done something great, not because we are Jews, we need a yamaka to wear the, uh, but you know we are invited by Jesus. Jesus' invitation—that's a great privilege. So we can also find Luther's character as a receiver. This made her life completely different. Okay. Okay. She took the initiative to provide her mother-in-law instead of depending on her. She's a foreigner, just came. She could just sit down and uh, waiting for her mother-in-law go out and clean, but he, she did not. Okay, it was not easy for the for her to do this in the new environment as a foreigner, but she was courageous. She was not. Uh, passive or lazy. She had no uh, um, well, sense of entitlement. Okay? She's also a hardworking woman. She worked morning to now, except short uh, rest. The receiver should not have a bag mentality. You know, I'm poor, so you feed me. No. <laughs> she worked hard. She could do what she could do. Okay, she was humble. She, when Boaz says, notice her, you know, she bowed down to face to the ground. Why have I found such a favor in your eyes that you notice me, a foreigner? She knew exactly who she was, foreigner. May I continue? To find favor in your eyes, my lord, you have put me uh, easy by speaking kindly to your servant, though I do not 
um, have the uh, standing over one of your servant. So she is such a humble woman. But she didn't have any beggar mentality at all. We don't know, uh, we know now why God used such a woman, right? Okay. So we can also find uh, more. She knew who she was. She was a foreigner, did not deserve to receive favor. Yet when it was offered, she was not offended. Uh, here is the, I don't need that. <laughs> All right? She was not offended. She humbly, gracious, uh, graciously received it till she did not take um, Versus favor for granted. So there's a basic attitude. Okay. Though she felt unworthy to receive it, she continued to ask it, uh, to find the favor. She also opened her heart and expressed her genuine feeling that Boaz's word had put her at ease. Okay? She says ease speaking. She was healthy and strong enough to carry 30 pounds of grain back to Naomi's house. She's a very healthy woman. That's why as soon as she got married, she had a Obed. <laughs> right? So she was minded for her mother, you know. 30 pounds is how many kilograms? It says the Bible. 13, 13 kilograms. She just carried, no problem. <laughs> healthy woman. <laughs> okay, this is my idea. <laughs> Okay, Boaz and Ruth as a type of Christ and us. Okay, especially speaking, we are like Moabites, outsiders and sinners like Ruth, who were excluded from uh, citizenship in Israel and foreigner to the covenant of the promise without hope, without God in the world. But our lives were meaningless and fruitless we are doomed to perish. But Christ came into the world to care for us out of his great mercy. He taught the word of life and give us meaning and purpose of life. He comforted and encouraged us and give us living hope of the kingdom of God. Finally, he died on the, uh, for our sins on the cross, redeemed us from the power of sin and death and Satan. In this way, he demonstrates God's love for us. He changed our status to be his beloved children, member of God's household, heir of his kingdom. He gave all this privilege, blessing freely by his grace, uh, grace alone. Indeed, we are foreigners. We, we are not deserved God's uh, grace and love. But because of Jesus, we become a God's family members, heir of uh, God, co-heir with Christ. Okay, in short, Christ redeemed us, so saved us from our sins. So, oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. So interpretation. So what do you learn from boys? I mean, your point of view. I will show, show you my point of view. Generous, yes. Grace, compassionate to the marginalized people, yes. Okay, I wrote a little more. Boaz as a cast character, gentleness, humility, understanding, kindness, compassion, generosity. No favoritism, but embrace all. Okay, all right. Boaz is the type of a Messiah initiating, initiating care for needy people. Jesus initiated salvation work by humbling himself and coming into the world. He always saw people with compassionate heart. Jesus understands the weak and vulnerable people and care for them. 
he did not break the bruised reed or snuff out smoldering wick. Jesus did not show favoritism, but embrace all who come to him. We have to realize that there is no favoritism in God. You sinned, God condemns. Yet we come to God and repent. He receives it as we are. That's the difference. Okay, what do you learn from Ruth? <laughs> Healthy woman. Oh, okay. That's my interpretation. Don't take it too hard. <laughs> Humble, yes. What else? Okay. Uh, uh, okay. I wrote to two. She shows us how to receive favor or grace with humility and faith and thanksgiving. She knew who she was: foreigner, poor widow, who had no claim on Israel's Israelite society. But she was not offended due to her pride. When favor was offered to her, nor did she take advantage of people's kindness or have a beggar mindset. Rather, she was hardworking, thankful, mindful of others. Right. I think uh, um, the Americans are generally very proud, right? <laughs> All right. So we have to learn from the uh, loot. Okay. Most of all, what can we learn about who God is? <laughs> Lord. <laughs> okay. <laughs> God is Lord. Yes, that's absolutely true. All right. Okay, uh, I wrote five of them. Okay. The atmosphere of harvest due to divine blessing shows us that God restores his people to bless after time of suffering through famine. Why did God give us a famine in time, in that time? In order to discipline, right? All right. So when you, your things are doesn't go well, when uh, uh, you, you are, uh, your, your family and everything do not go well, what do you do? Curse God? Okay. All right. Think about it as God's discipline. Then life completely will change. And you have a great joy in your heart. And the grace of God and love are abundant in your heart. Okay? God leads those who seek him to receive his favor. As God led Ruth to a uh, poison's field. Okay? Receiving favor is not a shame. Yet, we should not take it for granted, okay? All right. God protect, provide for, and bless, and rewards those who come under his wings of grace, okay? This guardian redeemer system, God's redemptive history could be continued, and Jesus was born in the line of Judah according to his promise. Already says in Genesis, Okay. God does not show favoritism, but gives grace to those who come to him by faith. You know, don't ever say, I'm born this way, so I cannot change. No. Okay. All right. So God is not only God of, um, God, God is not only God of Israel, but uh, of Gentile too. Okay. Naomi realized realized that God 
has not stopped showing his kindness to the living and the dead. The word kindness, we already talked about yesterday, has seed in Hebrew. Its first uh, usage occurred in chapter 1, verse 8. Um, I made uh, some mistake. It's so, uh, uh, typed wrong. In verse 22, appeared again in uh, chapter 3, verse 10. Naomi had received the, the law from God through his divine discipline, but she did not harbor a grudge against God. Rather, she realized that God is kind and faithful to those who turn back to him. Through this, we can see God is pouring his grace on his people from generation. So we also see deep comfort for the poor uh, old widow, and he turned um, his deep despair into the hope. I, I think uh, I, I was uh, typed uh, uh, while I was sleeping. <laughs> Anyway, um, we can learn so many things if you have a mind of uh, inductive Bible study way, you can find so many things. Uh, once observation, once you do the uh, interpretation, then you already can write the messages and added the uh, final application, then it works, right? So this is a very powerful tool to uh, inherit it from uh, Mother Barry to our ministry that uh, even though um, you may uh, think it's not useful, you may not think it's not useful, but uh, take it really useful for you. Okay, let me pray and finish. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for your grace upon uh, God's redemptive history. Uh, Luth was a poor foreigner, Moabite. She uh, could not receive any benefit from God. But when she was humble, she could, be, she could receive God's favor.